Welcome to the Nikola 11X12 technology. Today we're looking at the ASRock 990FX Extreme 3 AIM-3 Plus motherboard. As it already says in the model name, the 990FX chipset is used. Alright, here's the box. Again we're looking at the ASRock 990FX Extreme 3 motherboard. This board offers the X-Fast LAN feature, it's 8-core CPU ready, supports the AIM-3 Plus CPUs, features the 990FX chipset and also supports Windows 7. But don't worry, it now also supports the new Windows 8. On the back of the box you got lots of details on the features and their benefits. Up here there even is a little picture of the board itself. For my taste the box also looks very nice if that matters. But now let's open this box up and see what's inside. Alright here's the color coordinated IO shield, very nice. Then here's an anti-static row. Let's open that one up and yes it's an SLI bridge. Weird packaging for just one SLI bridge. You also get one 3.5mm audio cable and of course SATA cables, two SATA 6 gigabit per second cables to be specific. I really think ASRock should start including at least 4 cables because 2 really are not enough. That's the 990FX Extreme 3 software setup guide and this is the quick installation guide for this board. This manual is really thick for a quick guide. Not to forget there also is a driver CD, but I'd recommend downloading the latest drivers from ASRock's website, especially if you decide to use this board with Windows 8. And lastly, underneath, the motherboard itself in an anti-static bag. I'll quickly take it out and there it is. The first impression is good as the color and layout seems to be done correctly. It isn't one of the hardest boards, but it's good enough, it doesn't have a dangerous flex to it. Now let's fly over the motherboard so you can take a closer look at the design and color scheme. What I personally like is that ASRock definitely improved their color scheme. They now go for a professional black slash brown golden color scheme and this somehow makes them stand out in terms of the colors. This is a fairly cheap motherboard and still it features the flagship 990FX chipset and it even comes with a good amount of features and a unique design. The AM3 Plus socket is used which means that this board supports the first generation of AMD FX processors but also the second generation of it. 8 core CPU should work without any problems in this board and the AIM-3 Plus socket is also backward compatible with the AIM-3 CPU such as the Phenom 2 or Athlon 2 processors. The 990FX chipset still remains the flagship model and so the new FX processors released in 2012 should run without any limits. Please update to the latest BIOS if you decide to install one of the second generation FX series processors. As for the memory, you get 4 DIMMs and the dual channel technology is supported. The maximum amount of RAM you can install are 32GB. You can run memory frequencies from 800 to 2100 MHz at OC. Now to the SATA connections. Obviously you get 5 grey SATA 6 gigabit per second ports that run off the AD SB950 Southbridge. There are two stacks and on the right is a single standard SATA port probably to separate drives. But unfortunately you only get 5 ports here. I would have liked to see 6 at this point, but for the price it's not that bad. Let's move on to the expansion slots. Alright, you get a total of 3 PCI Express X16 slots. Here's the PCIe 2.0 X16 slot on the top, another one right here that also runs at X16 and the bottom PCIe slot will run at X4. At the top you also get the PCIe X1 slot for some expansion cards, like sound cards for example. But please be careful, this heatsink right there could interfere with the expansion card. But if you don't run a multi-GPU configuration, you could also use a standard X16 slot to install an X1 sound card for example. Lastly, you get two standard PCI slots. If you'd like to run two cards in Crossfire or SLI, both are supported, then use the first two slots as they will run at X16. Three-way Crossfire or SLI is also supported. If you only have one graphics card, I'd recommend installing it in the first slot. Alright, but now I'll show you the fan headers on this motherboard. Up there is the CPU Fan 1 header, right beside is the CPU Fan 2 header. Near the 24 pin power connector is the Chassis Fan 3 header. The Chassis Fan 2 header is beside the front panel headers and so is the Chassis Fan 1 header. In between the heat sinks is the Power Fan 1 header. Well I can only say good job ASRock for offering so many fan headers on this motherboard at this price point. This is something many boards lack even if you pay a lot more. But let's continue with the headers. Here's the front panel header along with the speaker and power LED headers. Here's the clear CMOS jumper, very nice. These are three USB 2.0 headers, but unfortunately there's no internal USB 3.0 connection offered. That's the COM port or also known as serial port. Now that's the infrared module header and lastly the front panel HD audio header. 
The 24 pin power connector is right here in its idle location as well as the ATX 12V 8 pin power connector up there. This motherboard has a 4 plus 1 face power design and that's a standard at this price point, but ASRAC used high quality components for a longer lifetime. To keep everything as cool as possible, ASRAC put heatsinks on the VRMs, the north bridge and the south bridge. And because the VRMs are also cooled down, you should be able to achieve good overclocking results. The design of the heatsinks looks very nice by the way, at least for my taste. The Realtek ELC 892 HD audio codec will take care of the audio playback and recording. This chip is pretty good, especially on the playback. Now let's get to the back panel. You get one PS2 mouse and one PS2 keyboard port. Here's one coaxial SPDIF out and below is the optical SPDIF output. Of course you get two standard USB 2.0 ports as well as one gigabit LAN and two more USB 2.0 ports. Then here are even two more USB 2.0 ports, an eSATA 6 gigabit per second port, two USB 3.0 ports and last but not least the 7.1 audio that is powered by the Realtek ELC892 audio codec. But now I'd like to show you the bias of this board. As you can see this is an UEFI bias and this type of bias should be a lot easier to use for beginners. Still you get lots of options and settings which is always good. The mouse unfortunately doesn't respond that well in this bias but that's something we've seen for some time now on ASRock's UEFI bias. But it's not that bad and still you could also use the keyboard to navigate. So the ASRock 990FX Extreme 3 is a really good choice for people that are looking for a decent motherboard in a lower price range. A board that features the flagship chipset model 990FX for the last generation or second generation of AMD FX processors. Great features are offered just like you'd see them on more expensive motherboards such as 3-way Crossfire X and SLI. The design and color scheme also looks great and even good performance is offered. The UEFI bias will make things a lot easier for beginners, but navigating with the mouse can sometimes be a hassle in the bias. So in the end, this motherboard is for people that want the flagship chipset 990FX, full support for the 8 core CPUs, great performance, overclocking possibilities, support for 3-way crossfire and SLI and overall a good looking motherboard for a fairly low price. Pros are great price performance ratio, good performance, then I like the good layout, this board also comes with a good amount of features and you also have an UEFI bias. I really like the color scheme and the design. What really stands out is the support for 2100MHz memory and the 3-way Crossfire X and SLI support at this price point. For the cons, well, navigating with the mouse and the UEFI bias can be difficult and this board only offers 5 SATA ports instead of 6, but then again we have to keep in mind the price. I give this motherboard a 9 out of 10 and would definitely recommend it. Thanks for watching and don't forget to subscribe.